This video highlights the main challenges and contributions of our work, and shows our final morphing results. Morphing two video sequences presents several challenges. Oftentimes the two videos are not temporally synchronized, as is the case of the two overlaid input videos shown on the left. One of our contributions is to synchronize the videos temporally to produce the intermediate result shown on the right. Naively applying image morphing to all the matching frame pairs after temporal synchronization may yield visual popping artifacts. To ensure that the mapping between the two videos is temporally coherent over time, we employ a temporal coherence term in our optimization energy function. Finally, it is important to allow the user to properly specify matching correspondences between features of the two input videos. A naive approach would require specifying many correspondences on all frames, as shown by the red dots on the left. Our technique leverages structural similarity to reduce the number of specified correspondences, and we use optical flow to propagate them across frames where appropriate. The yellow dots on the right are automatically propagated by our approach. Please refer to the paper for additional details. In generating the mapping, we use a halfway parametrization. The idea is to define a vector field V over a 3D domain that is intermediate between the two videos. Thus, the intermediate video is parameterized by a single continuous function. Our algorithm consists of two major steps. The first step temporally synchronizes the videos, and the second step performs the spatial alignment of the features in order to produce the final morph sequence. The first stage temporally advects pixels in the two input videos to synchronize their motions. The 3D optimization considers both the user correspondences and a smoothness term based on template splines. Note that spatial positions of the pixels do not change, and different pixels within the same frame may be temporally advected to different frames in the synchronized video. Please refer to the paper for details on the optimization. Here's an example of the temporal synchronization. Pixels belonging to the objects on the top are brought into correspondence without affecting the already synchronized objects on the bottom. In the second and final stage, our approach spatially aligns the features of the videos. The main additional challenge to properly morph between videos as opposed to images is to ensure that the morph is temporally coherent. This is accomplished by the temporal coherence energy term highlighted in red. During optimization of a point P in the halfway domain of the current frame, we seek to find the point Q in the previous frame that corresponds to P. We use an iterative procedure based on optical flow, shown as blue lines, to find such a point. Then we advec the two matching points from the previous frame of both input videos, shown in yellow in the current frame. The difference between the advected yellow points and the matching points in the current frame represent the temporal coherence energy. The paper describes the exact procedure in detail. Here is the final result after spatial optimization. The example on the left does not include a temporal coherence term and thus results in popping artifacts due to the lack of temporal smoothness in the solution. Next we present a demonstration of our user interface. The system has four panes. The two panes at the top show the two input videos. The pane at the bottom left shows the halfway image and the one at the bottom right the current result. We now show the entire process sped up by a factor of 3. In the first stage, we temporarily synchronize the two videos. This is accomplished by seeking to the frames where we want certain features to match, and clicking on the desired correspondence points. Note that the correspondences are advected by optical flow and the user can further adjust their locations using the mouse cursor when the propagation does not provide the desired result. During this process, the system is continuously running the temporal synchronization on the background and providing the current results in the bottom right. Once the user is satisfied with the result, it is time to move to stage 2. During the spatial optimization stage, the user can add and adjust additional control points in order to bring all of the desired features into alignment. Note that all correspondence points used in stage 1 are carried over to the synchronized videos and used as a starting point for stage 2. Once satisfied with the preliminary result on the bottom right, the user can simply wait for the full optimization to be carried out all the way to the finest level. Finally, the user can verify that the morph is appropriate and no further changes to the correspondences are required. The entire process for this video took just under 5 minutes. Next, we show some results of our work.
For the next few examples, we'll also show the results of the temporal synchronization stage. Next, we show some scenarios that are too challenging for our algorithm. If there are significant topological differences between the videos, a continuous mapping is not achievable. In the top example, the arm extends beyond the body of the subject, unlike in the bottom example. This makes it impossible to generate a continuous mapping between the two videos without blending the background of the top example with the foreground of the bottom example. In this example, the first stage can successfully synchronize the two weight lifters. However, due to the significant shift in the background, the resulting spatially optimized morph has undesirable distortions. This can only be addressed by masking the background prior to performing the morph. Finally, we conclude with some additional results.